Welcome to a new edition, another edition of X's and O's with Leroy O's. Butler, and we'll get right to it. We're going to talk about the 49ers and their defense mm -hmm. and their somewhat strange and often shifting and disguising mm -hmm. defense. This is yes. one of the best defenses in the NFL, correct? They tackle well, they're smart, they don't make a lot of dumb mistakes, and they're always disguising. I think they disguise more than anybody, Tom. I think. And we're showing a play here against the Giants in the uh, playoff last year. NFC Championship. They're yeah. really confused Eli, which you know, Eli Manny has seen everything and had an open receiver, but the pressure of this defense is what we call a 3-3. Three, three. You only got three linemen and three linebackers, so you would think that you have an opportunity right. to do whatever you want, and you got five blockers. So you have that three three linebackers, three off three defensive linemen. And you got this whopping gap right here yep. that if you see it on, on tape, it looks even bigger than it does here. But there's a reason for all of that. And yep. why don't you kind of explain what happens here, well, um, starting here, and what are they seeing? And, so. and he, well, Eli, the first thing he wants to do is what the safeties do. If they back straight up, they're in quarters. If they open up, they're, they're in cover two, and you're going to think the middle is wide open. But the key to this whole defense is the nose guard. He's kind of shaded on the center on the inside, and he's going to take a penetrating blow right there. And this turn the center, and this guy comes looping around here. Right. And now if you've got a li any linebacker on this side, if you come here, that line is all messed up, especially when Bowman walks down, this guard can't help. Mm -hmm. And now you got another guy that's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And the one thing that if you got a quarterback that runs a lot of Aaron Rodgers, and you got the best linebacker in the game, Patrick Willis, he right. just kind of spy right here, Tom, and took away the middle. But he also started creeping ahead, and next thing you know, the, the pocket was collapsed down. And okay, so in the secondary, basically you've got, you know, what you would think are one-on-one -on -one coverage, right? At least man coverage here. And yeah. this is Victor Cruzen, and yeah. he's the primary receiver in this yes. because you're hoping you know he gets one on one with, even though it's with Carlos Rogers, a right. very good. And he corner. was open. He came down and ran what we call a shake route, and came back in the middle. But the pressure, because Rogers got a little overextended, the safety was over a little bit trying to help with this kind of like an out, and. He was wide open, but the pressure, again, if you're a quarterback and you see just three linemen, you assume that they may drop eight, but they also can bring six right, at any right. time. This guy, um, Ahmad Brooks, walked up right. and made it yes. so that there were, well, actually, yeah. and this guy was close enough here. He started Rogers, out over he here. He could come, too. So you had four guys right here right. with essentially three guys to block, and that's right. got to be of concern. Mm -hmm. As it turned out, he dropped out. They ran this little stunt here. And boy, as soon as as soon as this guy got close to Eli Manning, mm -hmm. you know, um, Bowman, Willis, they they're like sharks. Yep, yep, they attack because remember, Bowman has uh, the running back man to man. If this running back steps up the block, he can come. Yeah. I used to do that all the time, and it kind of turns into a five man pressure, but a six man blitz. But again, you're right about Rodgers. He can ease up and come, and now you got one of your better safeties, man to man on the wide receiver. But now you can blitz six guys, and the guard can't pop out because he has to arm the linebacker in his face. So it's a good defense, but the Packers are almost number one, two or three in yards after the catch. This defense does not allow that. Well, let's talk about um, also where things might be a little different, and one of that would be if they lined up Michael Finley here. The Giants yes. don't have a Finley. Right. So what do who do the 49ers choose to they put would, on here? They would still treat him like a wide receiver. Because when you whenever Finley is extended, they're gonna treat him like a wide right. receiver and they run the same play. Now Jermichael Finley would be probably a, kind of a bigger target, he's 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 over Rodgers. Now, if you're Aaron Rodgers, you get any kind of pressure, you can go ahead and make that throw. Sure, or you can call a slant here, can't you? Absolutely. And just run it on him and, and let mm -hmm. him, he's got a tremendous oh, advantage. For the most part, Mike McCarthy knowing him, one of the best play calls, you can bring him in motion and you'll find out if it's man or not. Right. And he can run an option route either way. But the key is Saturday, you know, you know these guys you know, sitting, Lane, these three guys inside, they must protect. Right. 
And next we're going to look at what effect Cedric Benson might have in actually playing a defense similar to this. Okay, now we're going to look at um, Cedric Benson and what he brings to the offense. And I took this play from the Cincinnati game mm -hmm. um, when he played quite a bit. And one of the things that, um, you know, occurred to me, and, and you understand it as well, is that um, you face, when you have a one-back offense and three wide receivers, if the team, if the defense is playing a two deep coverage, there's only six guys in the box, right? right? And mm -hmm. so it makes it a lot easier to run the ball. And the Packers saw this defense, right, mm -hmm. at the end. Kansas City, you know, played it and really shut them down. They played man coverage underneath yep. and two safety. So why don't you kind of explain what happened here? And if you're playing like what well, we said, two man, this guy's in man to man. This guy's in man to man. This guy's a man to man. So you assume that they're out of the picture. And they're trying to yeah. take the timing off their right. routes, right? They're trying to... Inside out, they're just trying to jam them and run with them. Now these safeties are a little wider, like that. Now, in your blocking scheme here, you're just saying, if you're the center, you got to make sure you get a hat on a hat or you can trap a guy. So what happened was Rodgers, once he sees this coverage, and he understands what's going on with his own blocking scheme. And that's what throws me real quick. The reason why people say, why didn't they bring Ryan Grant back compared to Benson? When you're talking about the zone blocking scheme, they thought Benson brought more to the offense than Ryan Grant. Where Ryan Grant was more much of the same, they wanted a different look. So, and you can see the explosion play of this play. So if you get guys going to the next level, and just not a perfect block, but just a block that, you know, you can double T in and then you come to the next level to get off the linebacker. And then you can bear, uh, Belaga really doesn't spend a lot of time with this end because the end will come up the field. But now Benson gets the ball and he can cut back, Tom, and he made like 11 yard gain right there. And, and again, you know, and this is all preseason guys. And you'll see this will be Jermichael Finley, and that'll be Donald Driver, and that'll be uh, mm -hmm. Jordan Nelson on this side. But the good thing about it, if you're running this play, who can make the tackle if these blocks are made? Right. That's why it's a big play. And or you can see Rodgers can be make a run like that as right. well. Right. And what you saw was this guy creeped up, yep. and Benson broke this tackle got a few more yards, and this, this guy, guy came back, back and ended right. up making the tackle. Mm -hmm. and, and what you just said, what we saw in that game a lot was Rodgers scrambling yep. and getting a mm -hmm. lot of yards. And the reason for that is the man-to-man, -man, right? Man-to-man. -man. Explain what, why, why that's a because um, factor. When you're in man-to-man, -man, you're taught to watch the jersey and the hips. You're out of the run. You're not even counted on. You tell your safety, you're on your own. Sometimes you can yell, run, 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 but for the most part, these receivers, if they're blocking you, now you can take a peek. Mm -hmm. But most of these receivers, they'll run routes just to run you off. And for the most part, these guys got to be great tacklers. If they're not great tacklers, this can be a home run, which for the most part, San Francisco, you know, they're in good shape for us tackling. But what's the problem? They got two linebackers, Bowman and Willis, who are great tacklers. And these guys are moving around a lot. So it's up to... It's up to 63 and 12 to get together. Saturday and Rogers get together. And let's figure out what coverage we think these guys in and just go with it. And if we want to run some kind of trap or draw or screen, we can really gash them when we catch them in this coverage. Right. And traditionally, that's third and 12, third and 13, third and eight, and eight or more. This is the coverage they go to. And if, if McCarthy is patient enough and run a couple draws, this will throw off the whole defensive scheme. Yeah, even in a third and seven, right. there's a potential for a first down running Absolutely. the ball. As, yeah. But the whole key is these having these safeties back and them playing man-to-man -man because right. their back is to the ball. Now, we also saw in that 49ers video that mm -hmm. um, Patrick Willis was just kind of hanging around yes. the middle, and yeah. I would assume he's going to do that. He's going to be spying. So even if this is Alex Green, and the reason why it wasn't Alex Green now, because remember the Green Bay Packers, they run like a spread offense anyway, and they're gonna run a lot of no huddle. Mm -hmm. So it's up to the defense, they can't substitute, 
and they can't gather themselves. So right. I think the offense to keep them off balance. They got to keep an eye. Willis will be keeping an yeah. eye on Rodgers. He can't yeah. let them scramble like they did in the Cincinnati game. Well, they're going to try not to, but I tell you what, if it's a foot race between 12 and 55, it's going to be a good race. Yeah, he better hit the deck when he gets there because those <laughs> yeah, guys can hit. To make sure that he slides. <laughs> I think he'll be getting that message. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for another edition of X's and O's, our first of the season, and we'll see you again next week. See you next week.